Hey, what's going on everybody? So I'm so excited that you've decided to stop by and watch this webinar. And as you can see here, I'll be talking about my top three secrets to rocking out organic chemistry. Now you all know me as the Ochem Whisperer and I'm that guy that teaches organic chemistry with emojis. And this would probably be one representative emoji, I guess, of students that come to me. You can tell that they're not really upset, not really happy, somewhere in between. And a lot of students that come to me think probably that they're the only person that feels this. And I can assure you after tutoring for a, and teaching for a very long time, that's not the case. You're not the only one. But what I found is that there's a range of emotions that students come to me in when they're thinking about organic chemistry. Um, so you're not alone. But the one thing I have discovered is that after meeting with me, the Ochem Whisperer, they always move to the right-hand side. Maybe you even have a better emoji in terms of when you, when you finally figured out organic chemistry. But these are kind of the ones that I put on there. And most of them are kind of maxing out on the right-hand side. So kind of how did I get started? Um, well, just like you, I decided to get my undergraduate degree. And I finished that and I was having so much fun that I decided to continue on and get all these other degrees you can see here in extra education. So when I was moving from my PhD to postdoc, I realized that I wanted to transition from research, being a research professor and kind of discovering some sort of drug that was, that was going to revolutionize some field of medicine. And I actually wanted to teach and work with students because I was really having such a good time talking to the postdoc students, the undergrad, undergraduate students, and a lot of the professors. Um, so I was trying to figure out, well, how am I going to make this transition from research to teaching? Because at this time, you know, I'd been associated with, with universities and I had been teaching and tutoring, but I wanted to kind of figure out what was the next step. So while I was thinking about applying to jobs, I just decided to go online, Google, and I found YZAMP. So I thought this would be a great way to kind of start things. So, you know, I would set up uh, tutoring sessions, I would drive there, I'd come back and it was great, but I realized that it was really inefficient because at the time they didn't have online tutoring. So I figured, well, it'd be nice if I could kind of maximize that time rather than driving from place to place to actually be tutoring. So my wife and I sat down one day and she was like, well, why don't you create your own business? And I was like, wow, that's, that's actually a really good idea. So I, at the time, you know, when somebody says, I don't know how to create a business, I've never done this. So what do you do? I, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I was like, well, why don't I just create a Facebook page, invite all my friends, get some likes, even if they have no idea what I'm talking about, or even have any interest, let's get them on there and get the likes so people will see that, you know, that my page is working. Well, that was great. I did that, but unfortunately nobody wanted tutoring, right? But the good thing is, or else I wouldn't be talking to you, is that eventually I did get students to come in there. Um, and they would you know, start asking for my help and they were getting really good results. So with any business or anything you do, you always want to set a goal, right? Whether you've gotten, you're taking your organic chemistry class or you're doing something in life, you had to set a goal. So for me, um, I set my goal is what I wanted to do was completely revolutionize the way organic chemistry is taught and experienced by students. I don't want it to be the same way that it's been uh, for years and years and years. So the best way I thought about doing this was to simplify it. And where I got this idea from is if you um, go online or just watch commercials, all the geniuses in the world take things that are incredibly complicated and make them simple, right? We've all seen ads, whether it's online or on the TV, and say, you know what? Geez, that's so simple. I could have done that, right? So that's what I wanted to do with organic chemistry. I wanted people to be able to come and say, oh, man, organic chemistry, this is so easy. I can do this. So I wanted to simplify it, and I thought that was the best direction to go into. So while I was coming up with these ideas, I had a student come to me that said, hey, Jay, um, I've got to pass my organic chemistry class. And not only that, if I don't pass, I don't graduate. And not only that, I only have three days left. So on the outside, I was like, oh, sure, that's awesome. On the inside, I was like, what? <laughs> how am I going to do this? We have three days. I don't have an entire semester. And we have, you have to figure out how to get the student to pass. So that was definitely a challenge. But you know, I was starting to feel confident with all the students that I was working on with my own business. So I kind of took all my principles, all my simplified cases, put it together. You know, I think at this point in time, we actually only had two days because we couldn't meet until the next day. I think we met like four times. And I'm actually happy to say that this student was not only be able to, was able to graduate but pass. And since then, I've been able to do this three times. So there's been three students that have come to me and said, hey, I need to pass to graduate. And you can imagine, uh, drop this, I'm going to drop this again, that all of the students were definitely very elated and excited and on the right-hand side. Um, so the easiest way once I started doing this to call this was organic chemistry simplified, right? Organic chemistry simplified, right? It's not um, anything groundbreaking there. And what I found with kind of thinking about organic chemistry simplified was I realized students would come to me all the time and say, Jay, there's so many reactions and so re many reagents. I have no idea how I'm going to remember all this. And I was like, well, actually, you know what? There's only one reaction that you really have to worry about. And it comes down to the fact that everything in organic chemistry, whether you're doing a reaction or a mechanism comes down to you have a nucleophile and an electrophile. 
and the nucleophile is always negatively charged and the electrophile is always positively charged. And we've all heard about positives and negatives. They come together, right? That is the key to every reaction in organic chemistry. Now, the way we represent that in organic chemistry is we, we say that the negative always attacks the, uh, the, the negative, which is the nucleophile, always attacks the electrophile, which is positive. And we use an arrow, and the arrow always starts at the negative and goes to the positive. So you can see here, this is a cartoonish represent, representative reaction of anything you see in organic chemistry. But the key here is to see that there's two things, but there's actually only one reaction. Now, at this time, um, I was getting uh, essentially the majority of students to take the class are pre-med. And if anyone here listening is pre-med, you guys are awesome. You guys are unbelievably organized. You have fantastic time management skills, and you all have known what you wanted to do since you were five years old. Students will tell me all the time, oh, yeah, I've known I've wanted to be a veterinarian or a physician since I was five years old or a nurse or whatever that be. I've known that. So it was great because um, I wanted to kind of find a way to teach the vast majority of students were there, but still have the skills to teach maybe if there's a, a chemistry major and they're a biology major. But this was great because I was getting a certain type of student, which was really help, helping me build my business. Now, the thing that was really bothering me, though, was that every once in a while, although I was getting really good results, students would still come to me and they would struggle. So you can see here some of the emojis that I would represent in terms of how they felt. And that bothers me because, like I said, my goal was to get every student to look at this and be like, this is so simple, I can do this. So what I used to do was, and what I was taught over my entire life is that if you work four hours and it's not working, work 14. So push harder. If it's not working 14, do it in 40 hours. So push harder and harder and harder. But I realized over my life that wasn't working. It wasn't a matter of working harder. I had to figure out how to work smarter. So what I would do is I would take all of my best tips and tricks and I would throw out everything else. And then I would look at those and work on those until I had a light bulb moment. I would then take that light bulb moment and throw everything out. So what I would do is I would take the data, I would analyze it, get a light bulb moment, throw out, analyze, light bulb moment, throw out. And I would keep doing that until I eventually found what I thought was like my best tips and tricks. Now, what usually happens when you're feeling really good about what's going on, something comes up to throw you off your game to say, do you really know what you're doing? So I had a student come to me and they were like, hey Jay, I just got done with the tutoring session and the tutor told me that I should drop the class because I don't have a good, uh, a very solid foundation organic chemistry and I don't know what to do. The first thing I said was don't drop the class um, because I'm pretty sure that's not true. So what I had to do now was take all of these patterns that I had been working on, kind of refining, having my light bulb moments and wondering if I could convert them into a higher grade. So I think at the time this student was working on electrophilic aromatic substitution. And for those of you that are familiar have taken that, um, I think it takes up a pretty significant portion of the textbook. And not only that, professors take quite a long time, maybe a week, week and a half, up to two weeks, to teach all of that material. So in our first session, we sat down and we were able to go over that material in I think 30 to 45 minutes. And then the student was like, what, that's it? And I was like, well, hold on, did it make sense? They're like, yeah, that was really super simple. And I was like, yeah, see, organic chemistry is easy. So that was kind of the launching pad, that first session that the student realized, wait a minute, I can do this. So we continued just taking these tips and tricks and all these patterns and applying it throughout the semester. And I'm happy to say that when they first came here, they had a low C. This was not at the beginning of the semester. This was almost close to the, the towards the middle, maybe. And then they were able to rock it all the way to a B plus. And I think they were about five points away from an A. So you can imagine they definitely were automatically very, very far <laughs> on the right-hand side. I think they might have even been off this chart, but this is as many as I put on here. And um, some of the things that uh, I discovered through all these tutoring sessions as well as this one is that there's patterns all throughout organic chemistry. Now this right here, I'm pretty sure many of you are going to be familiar with. This is what's known as a reaction scheme. And this is kind of like the organic chemist, uh, what could we say, sentence structure, the way that we put it, they put it together. Um, and you'll see here that I've kind of marked things. There's kind of a pattern. So I don't know if you guys are like me, but I have a pattern or a routine from morning, noon, tonight. And if I didn't have that, I'd be completely lost and really not know what to do. And the way that I prioritize that is if I say, okay, what's the most important thing? What do I do? I put it first. I would assume a lot of you do that as well. Or if I prioritize from left to right, left is the most important and then right is the least important. I always put what's important first. Organic chemists are no different. So in this case, we've got one thing on the left-hand side, that function group that I've circled um, in alkene that I've circled in green. So that's always going to be one of the two things that I talked about. There's one reaction you have to worry about and there's two things. So that will always be one of the things. Then what you do is you go to your numbers. So obviously number one is gonna be, is the first thing and then number two is the second. So you go to number one and then you go to the first thing, the BH3 that I've circled in the green. So in the first reaction, number one, you're gonna take number one in the green circle, number two in the green circle, that's your one reaction, you're gonna bring that together. Then once you have that product, you're gonna go 
down below the arrow to number two, you're gonna pick the first thing. So the thing that you got from number one in the green circle, number two in the green circle put together, now you're going to add that to the uh, number three in the green circle and then that's gonna give you your product. But you can see here, it's a pattern. We could completely disregard all the other stuff. That's not really important. Okay, so now that we figured out there's only one reaction and that there's patterns everywhere, the last secret that I discovered was it really comes down to finding out what is your block. And for those of you that aren't familiar, um, I've got a podcast called Hanging Out with Yochem Whisper, and I talk about blocks. And what these blocks are is it's something that's keeping you, what I consider keeping you from getting the A in the class. So what would it mean? It would mean like a block could be um, a lack of confidence. A block could be that there's some piece of information that you're missing. A block could be the fact that there maybe is a mistake in your notes or the textbook that's throwing you off. I've seen all of these and much more. So it's a matter of discovering your block. And what I want to talk about with this block, how to discover this, I've got a case study of a student that I worked with. So this student got in touch with me, rocked out an A in OCHEM 1 and said, Hey, Jay, I'm going to be taking OCHEM um, in the summer school, and I just kind of want to catch up with you periodically just to make sure I'm on track and keep my A. So they go and they take their first exam in OCHEM 2, and they get a 52. So you can already know that that's not an A. That's not even close to an A. That's an F. Okay, so 52 is a far way from an A. So I was kind of interested to see what was going on here. And like I said, the student was taking OCHEM 2 over the summer. What we discovered the block was is that this professor is known to be hard and fail students. Now you can imagine that this is going to be a very challenging block, right? I mean, I can help students with their confidence. I can help students um, if there's a, a problem with the textbook or some sort of mistake, but I can't change the professor. So this was definitely a new challenge here, and I had to figure out how was I going to go about figuring this one out. So you can imagine both of us were kind of internally like, what in the world are we going to do? So. The great thing was is that I've been teaching for so long that um, I know that there's three types of questions that most professors will put on their exams. Um, and the first one is a reaction scheme, and that's kind of what we saw in, in, in secret number two where we had the reaction scheme, the pattern, where you're going to have a reaction question. And your professor will say, um, draw all the products and circle the major product or just give or provide me with the major product. So you just have to do the product, which would be on the right-hand side. The next type of question or mechanism, now that's where you have the starting material, the reagents above and below your arrow, and you'll also have the product provided, the answer. And then you have to go through with arrows like we saw in secret number one where I showed the arrow going from the nucleophile to electrophile. You have to draw arrows and show how you went from the starting material all the way to the product. And the last question are short answers, and those are based off of the reaction questions, the number one questions I was talking about, where you're going to have two or three reaction questions. You're going to have to predict the products, and then your professor will add another point and say, you know, out of these, why does one go faster than the other? So kind of a, a not only just know how to predict the product, but actually be able to apply that. So what we first did was, going back to the um, case study, was I first figured out what the questions were, and then we went back to secret number two and wanted to make sure that we understood all the patterns um, inorganic chemistry, you know, the ones like the reaction scheme as well as some other ones. So we used these patterns and we looked at the homework and exam questions, the professor's class notes, and we decided to create a plan that we felt was going to be best with in terms of what, I, or I guess I should say what I felt best was with the student that I was working with, the professor and the way that they saw organic chemistry, and then put all that together and figure out how could we figure out what's the best way to proceed. So we put this whole plan together and then I think at this point in time the exams were about every week. So we're starting with the 52. A week later, you know, this, the student goes in, takes the exam, and I'm sitting at home wondering, I mean, is this going to work? Did, did we really kind of crack the code on this one? So I'm sitting at home, and I get a text message late at night, and the student said I got an 83 on my exam. This was awesome. So remember, we went from a 52 to an 83 in a week. That's what, 31 points? My math isn't all that great, and it's good that it's not because I don't have to teach you guys math and organic chemistry. That is a massive increase. So at this point in time, we realized that we had really kind of cracked the code in terms of how to navigate this class and really rock it in the right direction, which is towards the top. So we just continued on with this. We kind of refined what we were doing. We were applying all these principles and going along, and the student was rocking out the quizzes, putting in the time and the effort, rocking out the exams. But for me, what I always look for is what's the final grade? You know, Where do we start? And eventually, at the end of the day, what is the grade that we're going to finish with? So once again, they take the final exam. I'm sitting at home really worried about how this is going to go. And they text me again and say that they got a B plus for their overall grade. Not only that, they were three points away from an A. What's even more exciting is that they got the highest grade in the class. So we were super excited that we had cracked the code on this and figured out that even if a professor is known to fail students, that it's possible to find a way around that. So, I mean, you can hear my voice. I'm, I'm so excited um, that this student was able to rock that out. 
Now this is self-explanatory. This time we've seen this numerous times. I don't even think this chart uh, really represents how we both felt or how we still feel about this. It's, it's, it's off the computer screen in terms of that. Um, so things that I also want you to consider here um, about this last case study is I get a lot of students that, you know, say, Jay, this is awesome. I love it. But they either say, you know, I, I, I'm used to in-person tutoring. I've never done online tutoring, or I don't know if I can afford that price long term. Well, with the online tutoring, if you've understood anything on this, then essentially this is online tutoring. The only difference is, and which I think is better, is I'd be talking specifically to you and I'd be answering your specific questions. So you could ask me a question, I would answer it, and then what's great is at the end of the session, I send you everything that I write. You get all of my lecture notes. So you can take notes while I'm going through, you can just listen and answer questions, or you can write things down really quickly, but you're gonna get everything that I write up here. And what students actually discover is that there's a lot of freedom to online tutoring. I've had students, you know, I'll text them and say, hey, you ready? Like, well, actually, I'm rushing. Um, they're like, well, actually, hold on. I'm, I'll just stop. So they'll stop and they'll start, they can start, I can, excuse me, I can start tutoring them with right now. I had one student that um, I was working with, they were hanging outside of a hospital because they were waiting on their friend. You literally can meet me anywhere that you want. And that's what students discover is that there's so much freedom. We don't have to sit, set a time up and go somewhere. Um, we also discovered that it's actually much cheaper to get a tutor than paying to retake OCHEM. Because if you retake OCHEM, that's going to be hundreds of dollars. And you may not get to take it until another semester or the summer school. And then what happens is that throws your entire semester off. And that actually turns out to be thousands of dollars. And you may not actually get to um, graduate and you want. So it's actually much cheaper to get help now rather than waiting to do it later. And the great thing that we both discover is that you all start moving towards the top of the class very, very rapidly. And what I found is that it's literally all about the patterns. It's about finding the patterns, seeing them, um, just shifting your focus slightly, applying these patterns, and then for me, tailoring these specifically to your needs, how you learn, how you see organic chemistry, what's going on in your class, and then use all that to move you to the top of the class. Now, as I said, that um, my goal was really to completely revolutionize the way that organic chemistry is taught and experienced for students where they all say, this is so simple. And what's great about this, as you've seen, is that you're using what you already know. I'm not trying to sell you a new program. There's not some book that you have to buy and then like apply all these principles. You already have the skills. It's simply just redirecting your attention or focus onto the things that are throughout organic chemistry. And it makes it much, much simpler. So what can you expect? I've kind of talked about this. So if you decided that you really like it, you really like this format and you like online tutoring and you kind of see the advantage of this, all you would have to do is send me a direct message through Instagram. We would set up a time, we would get online and we would start, you know, in the first five to 10 minutes, I would get a feel for how you learn and what's going on. And then from there on out, it'd be completely and totally personalized to you. And like I said, you get all the lecture notes at the end. So you can take your own notes, but you're going to get mine as well. So what are some of the things that students have been saying over the many, many years that I've been tutoring? So I worked with a student a few years ago, and they met with me for a couple times before um, one of their exams. And they got back to me and said that they got a 99 in their exam. I mean, that's that's about as close as you can get to 100, right? Um, and then they wound up you know, working with me throughout the semester, and they got an A in the class. So that was no problem. I've also heard I've learned more from you than I did in a semester. And I've also heard I wish I had found out about you earlier. So my question to you is, are you ready to be that student that breaks the curve in your class, that moves to the top of the class, and that can potentially get an A in your OCHEM class and be that legend that everybody talks about? And what everybody loves, including myself, is that you can get instant feedback. So what students will do, and this is kind of some of the best sessions that will happen, is a student will ask me a question, and then I'll answer it. And they'll be like, oh, man, that's awesome. I got that. Well, what about if my professor did these three things? And then I'll answer those really quick. and be like, oh, wow, okay, I see the pattern in that. Well, well, what if we looked at the whole chapter this way? You know, what, what if we had all these things in there? Oh, man, that makes sense. So you can see that what happens is we can go through a lot of material really quickly because you get instant feedback. I mean, who doesn't like instant feedback? When you have a question, you want the answer right now, right? So we all love instant feedback, and you can get that through online tutoring. Now, the way I want to summarize this and finish this up is that student that I was talking about that rocked out his class and got the highest grade when the professor was known to fail students, he went back just to kind of chat with the professor and see what's going on. And uh, the professor said, you know what? If you can get a B-plus in my class, you can do anything in life. And to me, that let me know that what I was trying to do with my business was working. What that professor, to me, the way I interpret it, essentially said is, look, I'm known to fail students, and somehow you figured out how to navigate this in your own way. And the fact that you can do that, you will never have any problems achieving your goals in life. 
That was a win-win for all of us. So to finish this up, what I want to say is, are you ready to be that student that rockets to the top of the class and knows that your dreams are possible?